Hello guys, this is me Dr. JK and today we will talk about radiotherapy in oral cancer. So first of all, we have definition. So what is it? It is the use of a high energy radiations uh, from X-rays, gamma rays, neutrons, protons and other sources to kill cancer cells and shrink tumors. Okay, so we do use different, uh, you know, uh, rays uh, to kill the cancer cell and uh, shrink tumors. Okay. Uh, radio, uh, radiotherapy is one of the most common treatments for cancer and we do uh, surgeries for it and uh, chemotherapy as well. We will talk about that later on. Okay, So uh, it is uh, the use of ionizing radiations in the treatment of malignant and benign conditions. We do use, uh, do, uh, use this for malignant and benign conditions as well. Before that uh, everyone was talking about malignant lesions that we do use radiotherapy but here I will tell you that it is also used in uh, some cases of uh, you know benign conditions uh, so after that we have uh, you know aim is to deliver uh, tumor acetal uh, doses to the disease uh, limit those to surrounding normal structure uh, for the tolerance you know uh, if we are doing radiotherapy uh, in the area these normal cells or normal uh, structure they can also be damaged so we have to uh, limit the doses of uh, those radiation and we will talk about uh, that as well so first of all we will talk about you know uh, radio biology here are different uh, uh, cells uh, you know stages of cell cycle this is the g1 uh, you know gap or growth phase this is the synthesis phase and this is the uh, g2 gap or growth phase and this is the mitotic phase so uh, basically this mitotic phase and this g2 phase they are more radio uh, sensitive so radiation will work more on these uh, you know when cell is in these two cycles uh, or these two phases or stages uh, but the you know uh, it will be more resistant when it is in g1 and the synthesis uh, phase or uh, stage okay so you should keep this in your mind and this is a basically a diagram about uh, radiation therapy a very you know a small diagram about it so this is the beam basically this is the targeted area and these are the you know tumor cells uh, and this is the uh, cancer uh, stem cell and this is necrotic cell and healthy cell. so basically we are uh, you know providing radiation from different angles these are cancer cells these are necrotic cells and here you can see uh, recovery after treatment so you should uh, remember four hours in radiotherapy this slide is very important uh, these are repair redistribution, deoxygenation, and repopulation. Repair of uh, sublethal cellular damage of normal cells. As I have talk, uh, talked it, uh, earlier, that uh, when we do radiotherapy, the normal, normal structures, uh, they, they are also, you know, damaged. So uh, we do need to, rep uh, to repair those normal cells. Then we have redistribution of tumor cells from radio resistant. Yes, we have talked about that uh, and you know uh, cell cycle stages in cell cycle so uh, we need uh, the uh, tumor cells to be in the uh, g2 phase and the mitotic phase so that it can be more uh, radio sensitive then uh, the third one is reoxygenation uh, the more uh, you know oxygenate is, uh, oxygenated is the tumor uh, the more it will be radio sensitive so we need a reoxygenation and of course uh, repopulation we have you know uh, that area which is uh, irradiated that needs you know uh, migration of normal cells from surrounding uh, uh, to that area to make that normal tissue with healthy cells okay uh, these are basically categories of uh, altered fractionation uh, three major categories you can check uh, it from uh, you know textbooks so I will just talk it about here briefly so uh, this is hyperfractionation accelerated fractionation and hypofractionation uh, these are basically three categories of fractionation okay so basically uh, here we will talk about indications for radiotherapy you know uh, if uh, the the lesion is in stage one and stage two disease or uh, cancer is in stage one and stage stage two then we need single modality either we will do surgery or we will do radiotherapy but if the cancer is in stage 3 and 4 disease then you know combined modality will be needed that will be you have to do surgery with uh, you know radiotherapy 
in most patients we do this okay but in selected patients we do chemotherapy with radiotherapy okay yes uh, you know if you talk about the uh, surgery and radiotherapy we do uh, sometimes surgery before radiotherapy and sometimes we do radiotherapy uh, before surgery so here we will discuss about pre operative radiation therapy uh, these are some advantages you know no treatment related delay in surgery limitations to the dose of radiation local uh, and the regional control these are some points regarding advantages allows uh, uh, complete surgical uh, histopathological and biological evaluation of the tumor and lymph node uh, it reduces tumor bulk you know uh, if we do radiotherapy as we have talked in our uh, you know single uh, first slide uh, there was about to kill the cancer cells and to make the tumor size shrinkable so it reduces tumor bulk uh, you know and oxygenation to the tissue adequate okay uh, yes one thing more if we do surgery then there are chances of uh, the cancer cells to be you know uh, to be dispersed in different areas so lymphatics uh, uh, are blocked in uh, radiotherapy so there will be uh, less uh, you know dissemination of tumor okay it will also eliminate microscope microscopic uh, spread uh, beyond palpable tumor mass so these are advantages of uh, uh, radiotherapy uh, pre operative radiotherapy so uh, as with advantages we have these advantages so first of all it is delay of surgery you have to you know uh, postpone your surgery up to 2 and a half month to 3 months uh, yes of course we have done radiotherapy which has uh, its own complications which includes scarring and uh, you know vascular modifications from surgery uh, may decrease tissue oxygenation and thus adversely affect radiation uh, tumor cell kill and the third one is the radiation dosage may adversely impact on subsequent post operative healing of course uh, when you do uh, um, uh, radiotherapy we will talk about those complication later on so it will compromise your uh, surgery if you if you do it pre operatively okay before surgery these are these were these were the disadvantages now we'll move to the uh, post operative radiation as we have talked about that pre -op pre operative uh, radiation therapy now we will move to the post operative uh, radiation therapy so here are the indications uh, you know uh, if uh, the uh, it is the locally advanced t3 or t4 lesions uh, you will do post operative therapy high grade histology of course patient uh, the uh, cancer is in advanced stages yes this uh, presence of a perineural or vascular invasion is there infl um, infiltrating rather than pushing borders of the tumor you know, uh, it means that the uh, you know tumor is of uh, infiltrating nature rather than pushing structures away from itself uh, then we have positive or close margin of uh, surgical resection uh, it is important to emphasize that even with a negative yes this point uh, should be remembered uh it tells us that uh, even with a negative margin status noted on pathology report there is a potential for recurrence of up to 30% okay so you should keep this point in your mind okay this is again post operative uh, radiotherapy should be initiated within 6 weeks of surgery to maximize the benefits so you have to uh, you know start the radiotherapy 6 weeks uh, within 6 weeks of surgery it will maximize the benefits of uh, uh, you know uh, procedure uh, these are a uh, role of radiation therapy this is uh, you know a radical uh, radiotherapy adjuvant radiotherapy concurrent chemotherapy palliative radiotherapy we will uh, discuss about this so basically we have ra radical radiotherapy this is curative uh, single modality you should keep in your mind that it is a single modality and yes of course if it is single modality these are indicated in early stage that is stage 1 and stage 2 cancer uh, and yes radiation therapy or surgery as we have talked about the uh, single modality so these are uh, done in stage 1 and stage 2 so radiation therapy or surgery can achieve excellent local control of 85 to 90% Uh, so these are basically advantages and disadvantages of uh, radical radiotherapy uh, you know uh, if we talk about advantages of radical radiotherapy it is of course non invasive procedure excellent functional and cosmetic uh, outcome always the option of surgical salvage present uh, okay and uh, disadvantages is it will prolong the time you know and immediate and late uh, you know uh, we have uh, radiotherapy complications as well and we will discuss about that 
later on. Okay, so uh, we will uh, talk about types of radiotherapy. You know, this is the external beam uh, therapy where we uh, provide radiation through external uh, beam. You know, this is external to the body. But here you can see the brachytherapy. The, the other one was teletherapy and this is brachytherapy where uh, we, we, you know, uh, we insert the radiation source, in, uh, source inside uh, the lesion or tissue. You will talk about it. Okay, so these are the types of radiotherapy, teletherapy, uh, that was external beam, and this is brachytherapy, that is internal. So teletherapy treatment in which radiation source is kept at a distance from the patient, of course, and is also known, known as external radiotherapy, and this is brachytherapy. Uh, treatment in which a sealed radiation source is placed inside or next to the area requiring treatment. This is also known as uh, the internal uh, radiotherapy. Okay, we will discuss more about uh, external beam radiation therapy that is also known as teletherapy. Uh, the therapeutic uh, uh, radiation is uh, delivered by two main uh, methods. The first one is the electromagnetic radiations, uh, X that is X-rays and gamma rays. Uh, the second one is particulate radiation in the form of electrons, neutrons, and photons. Okay. Uh, then we will talk about uh, brachytherapy, that is internal radiation uh, therapy. Uh, the radiation source are placed either adjacent to the structure uh, or surface of a tumor mass or bed uh, or inside the tumor itself. Applied has a definitive treatment for oral squamous cell carcinoma has a complementary treatment in combination with surgery. Okay, further, uh, if we talk about brachytherapy, it has further two types. Uh, number one is uh, interstitial and the second one is the intracavitary radiation. And uh, uh, what type of agents do we use? It, these are radium, cesium, iridium, radon, gold, and iodine. These are the basically agents of uh, the uh, brachytherapy. Okay, now we'll talk about criteria for bracket therapy. So, of course, the lesion should be accessible. It should be less than three centimeter in size. It should be away from the bone, at least five millimeter away. Okay, and yes, there should be no mod uh, nodal metastasis. If there is nodal metastasis, then you cannot do bracket therapy. So, these are basically criteria for uh, bracket therapy. And now uh, we will talk about the other type of uh, radiotherapy that is adjuvant radiotherapy locally advanced this uh, disease we have talked about uh, bracket therapy that that was uh, done uh, in stage one and stage uh, two but here uh, the uh, you know lesion is uh, locally advanced and it is in stage three and four a it is a combined modality uh, where we do surgery plus uh, radiotherapy uh, if we do a single modality then uh, the control will be poor so we have to uh, you know do combined modality Okay, so uh, it is given after primary modality of treatment when there is no clinical or radiological evidence of the disease. Uh, okay, what will it do? It will uh, sterilize microscopic disease and it will, uh, you know, uh, prevent uh, the future recurrence of the lesion. So these are some, you know, uh, you can say uh, indications of uh, adjuvant radiotherapy. Then we will talk about concurrent chemo and radio. Uh, therapy in head and neck uh, cancer. So where we will do uh, concurrent uh, radiotherapy uh, if uh, we uh, you know we want to preserve the organ. If the lesion is in nas nasopharynx uh, or oropharynx or hypopharynx or in larynx. Okay, uh, as we have talked about it, uh, so uh, the concurrent will be radiotherapy will be done uh, if the cancer is unresectable, you know and the patient is medically inoperable and adjuvant chemo, radi uh, chemo radiation when margins are positive or extra capsular invasion is there. And after that we have the last one that is palliative radiotherapy and uh, that is done uh, in metastatic cancer or locally advanced cancer in elderly patients with poor performance. So we do palliative radiotherapy there. Okay, so what are the different factors that will influence the effectiveness of radiotherapy? Uh, these are some uh, factors about it. Number one is the total dose. Then we have concurrent treatment with chemo chemotherapy or biological agents and uh, delays in starting treatment. 
okay has a relative risk of uh, local regional recurrence uh, yes then uh, there are other factors as well this is treatment interruptions local control falls by 1.4 percent per extra day when it is prolonged so we have to keep in our mind that uh, this treatment should be on time uh, on the selected days so it should not be delayed or otherwise it will be uh, you know uh, the control will be fall okay and uh, yes anemia have impact on uh, the uh, you know effectiveness of radiotherapy similar is the case with hb and hb that is hemoglobin should be more than 12 gram per deciliter loss of local control of disease by approximately 10 to 15 percent for a 2 gram deciliter fall in hb if there is 2 gram uh, per deciliter fall in hb then it will cause 10 to 15 percent of uh, uh, loss of control disease control okay and uh, yes smoking ha uh, smoking has also effect uh, 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 the, it will also influence the effectiveness of radiotherapy uh, okay yes uh, so how does smoking uh, you know uh, uh, affect this uh, radiotherapy uh, it will reduce uh, the treatment effectiveness by uh, you know uh, carbon monoxide will be inhaled and uh, carbon uh, monoxide has more uh, you know um, uh, more bonding uh, power to uh, HB as compared to the oxygen. So it will display the oxygen away from HB and uh, instead of oxygen carbon monoxide will be uh, you know attached to the HB. So uh, that will uh, yes, and, we, and we have talked about we need uh, you know oxygenation of that uh, hypoxic area. So it will adversely affect that uh, treatment you know uh, we are doing. Okay, so points to remember uh, role of uh, radio, uh, radiotherapy. You know, this uh, this is a very interesting and very you know uh, important slide. So early stage, stage one and two, uh, we need single modality. That is uh, either surgery or radiotherapy. If uh, the lesion is locally advanced, then we need multi modality. Then we need surgery and radio radiotherapy plus minus chemotherapy. Okay. So, uh, what are the different types? What were the different types of uh, radiotherapy? Uh, those were radical, adjuvant, and palliative radiotherapy. So, uh, this is about the you know uh, dosage of uh, uh, different dosage of radiation. We should remember these things. I will um, <coughs> I will talk about this. So, a definitive radiation 66 to 70 grays in 33 to 35 fractions. 2 grays per fraction, 5 fractions a week for a total of 7 weeks. So, uh, you know, uh, these are, this is basically about the dosage. So, uh, I think you should uh, check it and you have to, you know, uh, memorize these uh, readings here. Okay, adjuvant radiations, 60 grays in 30 fractions, uh, 2 grays per fraction, 5 fractions a week for a total of 6 weeks. Uh, adjuvant will be to, uh, for a total of uh, 6 weeks. The radical will be for seven weeks and then palliative dose schedules 45 grays in 15 fractions 30 grays in 10 fractions 20 grays in five fractions and then we will talk about brachytherapy 36 to 40 grays in 9 to 10 fractions uh, twice daily uh, fractions for five days okay so uh, you have to keep these readings in your mind in order to memorize this uh, dosage and yes uh, you know if we uh, we are doing radiotherapy so it will affect normal tissues as well so normal tissues have uh, they have uh, you know uh, tolerance limits so these are uh, tolerance limit of spinal cord that mean value is uh, uh, less than 45 grays and maximum 50 grays brain stem mean level less than 44 grays maximum maximum will be 50 grays okay parotid uh, if you uh, one uh, if we are talk we are using one modality then mean will be less than 20 grays and we are using in combination then mean will should be less than 25 25 grays and larynx the mean should be uh, you know less than 40 grays okay we will talk about uh, you know of course we are doing uh, a therapy so it will uh, affect the normal tissues as well so these are you know complication of uh, uh, radiotherapy 
we have you know acute complication and late complications so we will talk about acute here uh, acute is should be uh, within three months uh, these are primary and further uh, further these acute complications are divided into primary and secondary uh, complication primary will be dermatitis mucositis a salivary gland dysfunction and secondary will be secondary infection pain dehydration uh, disuse uh, malnutrition okay okay uh, as we have talked about acute that was within three months and these are late uh, that is uh, you know uh, after six months there will be xerostomia it is dry mouth of course if there is xerostomia it will lead to dental caries and yes there we have fibrosis and uh, other damages uh, in the you know uh, oral cavity so it will lead to trismus that is basically you know difficulty in mouth opening uh, in a uh, normal uh, person mouth opening is usually uh, from 35 to 45 mm but if uh, it is less than 30 then of course it will be uh, it will be called trismus it uh, the trismus has further you know uh, uh, mild moderate and severe type in mild the mouth opening uh, in between the incisal you know uh, incisal edges should, will be uh, uh, 20 to 30 mm then it will be mild if it is between uh, 10 to 20 mm it will be moderate and if it is, it is less than 10 mm the mouth opening is less than 10 mm it will be uh, you know severe trismus and of course uh, with a complication uh, osteo necrosis can be there so this is basically a picture about radiation dermatitis this is grade 1 this is grade 2 grade 3 and grade 4 you can uh, check this on uh, your uh, textbooks as well so uh, we will talk about radiation dermatitis uh, cares to be taken during uh, radiotherapy you know a gentle washing should be done uh, avoidance of friction uh, as there is dermatitis L loose cotton clothing should be uh, should patient should use loose uh, you know cotton clothing avoid shaving patient cannot shave or rather should avoid shaving and avoid chemical irritants avoid smoking smoking will lead to that carbon monoxide poisoning and all that and all that stuff okay radiation dermatitis management mm, onset is uh, two weeks after uh, initiation of uh, radiotherapy you know persist up to four weeks after completion careful clean cleansing of skin keep it open in here okay we will we can use cream uh, that is in in that cream uh, local anesthetic should be present and yes silver uh, sulfur uh, diazine should be present uh, yes pain management should be there and yes if the dermatitis in grade threes so you should stop radiotherapy in that case i will talk about mucositis this is grade one two three and four uh, you should read it in your textbooks so yes we will talk about it and uh, what care should be taken during radio th radiotherapy uh, good oral hygiene sh uh, you know should be there clean mouth after every meal use soft toothbrush okay this uh, soft toothbrush thing uh, i want to discuss more uh, if uh, the patient uh, is uh, on radiotherapy you should also use soft toothbrush and uh, the normal people with, uh, who uh, of course uh, they I mean uh, toothbrush uh, they they brush their teeth they should also use a soft toothbrush uh, the hard toothbrush will you know hurt your gums and uh, it will cause gum recession so if you wanna uh, keep your gums healthy you should use soft toothbrushes okay apart from that then uh, soda bicarbonate gargles every two to three hours i use lip balms uh, you know dentures can be removed you know uh, dentures should be removed denture will cause further you know damage to the mucosa and also dentures uh, will uh, if if uh, the patient is on radiotherapy denture can also lead to osteo necrosis so you should not the patient should not use uh, you know dentures okay what are the managements of radiation mucositis uh, you know good oral hygiene soda bicarbonate, bicarbonate gargles analgesics and anti-inflammatory uh, drugs can be used local anesthetic gel can be used of course for pain control uh, and yes nasal uh, gastric tube or ng tube should be used for feeding and uh, if the mucositis in uh, grade 3 then you know uh, radiotherapy should be stopped yes if the patient is on radiotherapy and of course uh, the patient has uh, cancer 
So it means that the, his immune system is compromised. If the immune system is compromised, then other infections, you know, uh, they have a chance uh, to get over to the patient and uh, they can attack the patient and there can be secondary infection in the patient who are immunocompromised. So uh, if you talk about secondary infection, of course, oral candidiasis is most common. You know, this is candidiasis, candidiasis case, there is fungal infection. Uh, of course, it is. Uh, uh, of course, if it is fungal infection, then you can use uh, antifungal drugs. That is topical clotrimazole, uh, and uh, uh, tablets can also be used. That is a fluconazole, 100, 100 mg uh, one time or OD for five days. And this is the you know uh, analgesic later later by world, world health organization uh, okay if uh, uh, this is the first second and the thir third stage uh, this is the first stage and we use uh, non opioid we can also uh, plus minus adjuvant drugs can also be used but if the pain uh, persisting or is increasing then you have to use you know opioids for mild to mod moderate pain sorry mild to moderate pain okay and then uh, plus minus uh, non opioids and uh, uh, plus minus adjuvant here we have used uh, non opioids but here we will use opioids but that will be for the mild to moderate pain okay and if we talk about the stage 3 or later 3 then uh, we will use opioid for moderate to severe here it was for mild to moderate but here it is for moderate to severe then again the same regime that is plus minus non opioids and plus minus adjuvant so this is basically uh, a letter of uh, uh, analgesic letter by WHO. Okay, of course, uh, we are using radiations that will uh, definitely, uh, if we are we, uh, using radiotherapy for uh, you know oral cancer, that will definitely definitely affect salivary glands as well. So uh, you know uh, it will affect salivary gland uh, function. So there will be dysfunction of uh, salivary gland during radiotherapy. Reduced thickened and sticky saliva. Uh, will be there uh, spit frequently because of mucus build up irritating especially at night uh, so the patient should spit frequently okay increased chance of mucosal injury of course if uh, uh, the uh, you know uh, mucus is less then there are more chances of mu uh, mucosal injury oral infections are common there are different you know proteins present in the saliva that can combat uh, the infections but if uh, you have if the patient uh, has less, you know, uh, um, mucus, of course, it will lead to uh, more chances of infection. Okay, uh, if, uh, you know, um, of course, saliva is not there, then there will be difficulty in chewing, swallowing, speaking and smiling. Okay, so what should we do uh, for salivary gland dysfunction that is during radiotherapy? Mouth rinse half teaspoon salt and baking soda, each in one liter of water, you should uh, you should you know uh, rinse your mouth with this thing and uh, uh, frequent sips of water is a very good treatment we do uh, you know um, recommend patients who are on radiotherapy about these frequent sips of water and is very useful uh, xerostomia that is basically dry mouth as you can see it's uh, sal saliva here uh, these streets of saliva and here you can see there is no such saliva so it is basically you know uh, the saliva uh, you know uh, gets minimized there will be less secretion of saliva due to effect of uh, radiation on uh, parotid gland sub uh, mandibular gland and sublingual gland so pathological uh, low saliva secretion has uh, uh, equal to or less than 0 0.1 milliliter per minute for unstimulated wool salivary flow and uh, less than or equal to 0.5 milliliter uh, per minute for a stimulated wool salivary flow okay of course if there uh, there is less saliva then there will be more chances of rampant tooth decay frequent oral ulcer, ulcers will be there oral infections uh, will be there uh, altered taste sensation uh, you know uh, saliva has a function of uh, you know washing the taste buds so that will work uh, properly if uh, there is less saliva there will be less washing of taste buds and that it will lead to uh, altered taste sensation and uh, if it is, there is less saliva then there will be difficulty in swallowing speaking and smiling and uh, yes of course there will be halitosis or bad breath
what are the different tips to alleviate dry mouth uh, frequent sips of water as I, as i have told this is a very uh, you know uh, very good remedy for uh, xerostomia so the patient should use uh, mm, frequent sips of water lip moisturizers can be used soda bicarbonate gargle frequently salivary substitutes are also present you know a patient can also use a salivary substitutes take small bites of moist foods with gravy chew slowly sip liquids while eating okay uh, dental caries if there is less saliva then there will be more chances of uh, dental caries yes of course salivary uh, saliva contains antimicrobial uh, you know proteins so if saliva is less antimicrobial proteins will be less there will be more ch more chances of dental caries increase colonization with streptococcus mutants these are the microbes uh, that will lead to these you know caries and uh, lactobacillus loss of mineralization components as well those saliva also contain you know uh, mineralizing components so of course there will be less mineralization there will be more uh, chances of dental caries so what are the different tips to combat dental caries I use a salivary substitutes topical application of fluorides after eating brush teeth with a soft brush and small a dab of fluoride toothpaste uh, chlorhexidine mouthwash can also be used uh, this uh, is trismus as i have talked about it earlier so uh, secondary to surgery and radiotherapy if uh, the patient has undergone surgery or radiotherapy then uh, there is chances of trismus this was in the late complication of uh, radiotherapy as well so physiotherapy like mandible stretching exercise as we can see uh, the patient can use uh, his fingers or also can use sticks uh, you know stick stick exercise as well uh, for this thing uh, and yes you should keep it in your mind that uh, it should be done before developing trismus if the trismus is developed then surgery surgical correction will be done that will be to you know uh, that those uh, fibrous bands will be excised yes this is very important topic uh, osteoradionegresis that needs uh, you know uh, explanation but i will discuss briefly about it here uh, it is characterized by an unhealing area of exposed mandibular or and maxillary bone of uh, at least 6 months duration in a patient who has been treated with uh, radiotherapy okay so typically it occurs within first three years uh, what is the most common site of osteoradio necrosis uh, it is the mandible as compared to the maxilla can be uh, spontaneous but usually result from uh, tissue injury following tooth extraction okay so uh, there is more chances of uh, uh, you know uh, osteoradio necrosis if the patient goes for you know uh, extraction so uh, there are some you know uh, um, some things that should be should be kept in mind before going to extraction after radiotherapy i will discuss that later on so it is basically related to hypovascular hypocellular and hypoxic condition after radiotherapy so radiotherapy will cause hypovascularity hypocellularity and hypoxic conditions so uh, it may lead to osteoradio necrosis uh, what are the managements of osteoradio necrosis local irrigation using salt and soda solution uh, topical backing with zinc oxide and antibiotics dentures removed as i have talked earlier that dentures should not be wear by the patient when he is undergone to uh, you know a radiotherapy so dentures should be removed uh, okay sequestrated bony fragments removed uh, hbo therapy that is uh, hyperbaric oxygen therapy helps to promote vascularity growth of new blood vessels aiding healing process uh, there is uh, some specialized uh, type of tanks uh, for uh, you know uh, hyperbaric oxygen therapy so patient uh, you know uh, uh, will undergo this therapy diving will be there and uh, some dose will be you know provided for such stuff okay and if uh, of course posterior radio necrosis is in advanced stages then uh, we will do mandibular resection with reconstruction post radiation prosthodontic care oral soft tissue must be adequately healed before necessary prosthodontic procedures so oral soft tissue should be you know uh, adequately healed 
a latent period of uh, at least six months to one year should be provided for that patient. This is dental extraction. Dental extraction should be considered only if it is necessary. If it is unnecessary, then uh, the patient should not go for extraction. Otherwise, it will cause complication, and the big complication will be osteoid necrosis. Okay, extremely mobile periodontally compromised teeth can be safely removed. Teeth located uh, in non-irradiated areas can be removed uh, safely. Uh, clean, uh, cleaning, scaling, and filling can be done. There is no harm in cleaning, scaling, and you know filling. But the extraction that is you know dangerous so patient should keep this in his mind pre-radiation dental prophylaxis sorry for that okay uh, uh, thorough dental examination a patient reduction uh, um, sorry patient education regarding the need for uh, meticulous oral hygiene definitive uh, definitive restorations in cases of uh, caries if involving pulp but good prognosis root canal treatment should be done in uh, you know patient undergoing through undergoing radiotherapy if prognosis is poor dental extraction can be done but with care healing period of two weeks should be given before starting radiotherapy okay antibiotic coverage should be given periodontally involved teeth uh, with moderate to severe mobility should be removed Dentures can be source of mucosal irritation, irritating. Uh, sorry, yes, it is a mucosal irritation. Uh, we have talked it uh, earlier that uh, dentures can uh, lead to uh, you know mucosal irritation and also osteoidal necrosis. Hence, remove uh, it temporarily during radiotherapy. Okay, points to remember uh, about oral complication: acute. Dermatitis, mucositis, secondary infection, pain, late, xerostomia, dental caries, trismus, osteoradio, necrosis. So, dental prophylaxis before uh, radiotherapy is a must thing. So, that was all about this presentation and uh, I am hopeful that uh, I have made it uh, comprehensive for you people. So, these are uh, different, you know, uh, references from where these slides were taken. And special thanks, yes, special thanks to Dr. Ram uh, Madhavan and Salesh Kumar for providing such beautiful slides. Uh, uh, that, you know, I have modified it a bit further. So special thanks to uh, these two people for providing, you know, different slides on radiotherapy. If you have any question, you can uh, drop your question in the comment box below. I will try to answer those questions. So it's me, Dr. JK, and thank you so much for watching and listening this lecture. I will uh, try my level best to provide with further knowledge and further topics. Uh, so till then, take care and bye-bye.